Welcome to the Balling Sisters. The sisters are back, and game week one has just finished. This was the perfect start of the Premier League season of 22-23. We've uh, discussed uh, Arsenal versus Crystal Palace uh, earlier, and you can find it here or here somewhere. But uh, for me, um, there were six games uh, on this Saturday night, and. Uh, Fulham versus Liverpool, what a cracker of a game finished uh, with honours even. Thanks to Darwin Nunes and Mohamed Salah, what a game which Mitrovic had. Uh, Bournemouth, the surprise package, won 2-0 over Villa. The kind of signings which Villa has had, it was a setback for them from game week one. We expected a lot. Leeds versus Wolves had sparks all over the place. There was fights between the manager by the end of the game. There was a lot of things happening. and But in the end, at Ellen Road, Leeds started off the campaign in a winning fashion of beating uh, Wolves 2-1. Uh, Newcastle versus Forest, the only team, only promoted team not to gain points from this season, uh, this game week one, was Nottingham Forest, uh, where uh, they lost to Newcastle at St. James's Park uh, 2-0. Uh, Spurs came back from behind, beating Saints 4-1. And the last game between Everton and Chelsea ended with Chelsea beating Everton, even though it was not the kind of game anybody expected. The 22-23 season has just started and it has got sparks all over the place. Starting off with the first game, uh, Liverpool versus Fulham. Liverpool went behind to Mitrovic's header. They were 1-0 down, but in the second half, Darwin Nunes, once he came onto the pitch, it was his game. He started off the progression back, they levelled up, then Mitrovic again scored. Um, it became 2-1, and then his assist for Mohamed Salah, it made 2-2. But what a game. Um, and it was it has been heard that Hergen Klopp was not a happy chappy for the game for, for the first game week. He has lost points this season. Uh, in the first game week, at least, it was three points lost for Liverpool, even though the honours were even. And full credit to Marco Silva's side uh, for Fulham. They have done it brilliantly. And this is the third time Marco Silva's side was... Uh, they've held the Reds. They've not been... Uh, uh, the Reds have not been able to beat Marco Silva's side. Earlier, it was in Wolves, and this time around with Fulham. It is the same thing. The, so, the clock goes on uh, for Herwin Klopp to find a solution against Marco Silva's side. Um, going on from there, uh, uh, we, we've had uh, Southampton versus uh, Spurs. Oh, what a game that was. It started off with uh, Jimmy Ward prowse the captain leading the, the leading from the front. The contract was laid, but then Kulusevsky had a game of a lifetime. A goal and an assist to before the halftime, he let the team and the th team led after 2-1 in at halftime and then it was a different game altogether. Uh, at the end, uh, Antonio Conte's side doubled the lead in the second half and became 4-1. And this is the biggest victory ever for Spurs in the first game week in his in the in the past 30 years. This is the biggest victory and you can now know what kind of work is Antonio Conte doing with Spurs and like we like I early, early, earlier also mentioned that Spurs are there in the reckoning in top three no matter who says what but then he is there and Spurs will be a big big challenge I feel so I don't know uh, what what does game week two three four and five will bring in uh, before we go in for the international break and uh, before we get off in November for the World Cup a lot is going to be there um, then uh, we go on to Nottingham Forest. I think so. The only team uh, who's promoted and not been able to gain points, they would be disappointed. They're back into the Premier League after 23 years. But then Newcastle were a bit too much for them. They lost 2 0 uh, to Newcastle uh, with uh, Newcastle winning the first game uh, in uh, earlier than 21 22, 14 matches earlier, if I'm not wrong. In the last season, they were all over the place and they were not able to gain points uh, for the first 14-15 games. This time around, they have gained 
points in the first game week itself and it shows a lot how Eddie Howe has been playing his team and how the team has been performing and um, Fabian Schaar and Callum Wilson, uh, Callum Wilson, Wilson uh, were the players who scored the goal and uh, it says a lot uh, for Eddie Howe's team uh, how, how, how they have been um, they, they, they've been uh, playing along uh, in the Premier League and now it is showing the the, the back backing which the Newcastle uh, management is showing on Eddie Howe. So it shows a lot of character. The team is showing character and I think the Newcastle is going to be trying they they'll try and try and finish quite a lot. But then this is very, very early beginnings in the Premier League, just been game week one. A lot can be read through, but then the majority of it in this Premier League is going to be based on consistency. How is the team performing game in and game out? And with the Champions League coming in, FA Cup, Carling Cups also coming in later on um, in the months, how will the team perform is something which is to be looked at. And not just for Newcastle, Southampton, or Spurs, or for, for that matter, any of the 20 teams which are there in this league. It is all about consistency. How are people performing? Um, going on from uh, Nottingham Forest and uh, uh, Newcastle, we go on to AFC Bournemouth, a surprise package. I didn't expect this. Very honestly speaking, I didn't expect AFC Bournemouth to win the first game week. They crucified Aston Villa. Crucified is the word. They had the quickest goal in the Premier League season for 22-23. Uh, and the quickest goal scored by a promoted team. A minute and 56 seconds. Imagine. Uh, Lerma was the person who scored the goal and then uh, we had Moore in the 80th minute who sealed the victory but there is a lot of food for thought for Steven Gerrard's Villa they spent a lot they've got brilliant players but I still feel there's a lot of work to be done and so I think so you all will agree with me that there's a lot of work which just has to go down with Villa because AFC Bournemouth has just come up they've not done a lot of signings the team does have uh, or gelling from uh, the championship. But then I, I, I feel that they can do much more. A lot can be done. Uh, but I think so to Villa to come into its own colours, it's going to take a light, slight amount of time because they've had decent amount of signings. And with those signings comes pressure. And I think so Steven Gerrard, even though he's done well in the Scottish League, he's done well in the Premier League in the in, in last season, the second half. But this Premier League, this season, it is going to be a bit Great, great challenge for him. How does Villa show in their own colours with the kind of signings they've done? And there's a lot expected out of Aston Villa, not just from Villa fans, but football fans all over. The kind of signings they've done. And I and I feel personally, because I've watched Villa this season, especially with the transfer window, um, they're a team to watch. They are one of the dark horses, but then the, the performance has to come into numbers. It has to perform. The kind of expense they have done. There is a lot to be done in that. And the final game for Saturday was between Toffees, the former uh, Chelsea legend and now the current and former Chelsea manager and now current Everton manager, Frank Lampard versus his former nemesis, Thomas Tuchel, who took his, own jo uh, took his job uh, at Chelsea. Chelsea were all over the place. They were not clinical there's a lot of concerns uh, shown by the manager. They just won 1-0 because of one mistake which was made. It was a penalty. Jorginho scored. But a lot of talking points. Everton were great. Uh, they tried to score. But then Edward Mendy was again one of the shining stars for the team. New signings did do decently well. But then nothing so phenomenal that it has to be talked about. But it was in front of the goal, it was a drab uh, performance from either side, even from uh, Everton side as well as from Chelsea side. A lot is expected out of Frank Lampard and his team in, in the kind of performances that they have to show this season because a lot is hanging into the balance and Frank to show the kind of Premier League manager he is, the team, the way they perform, even though he plays from his heart and manages from his heart. But then if it doesn't convert onto the pitch, it is a question mark onto the tactics. And same goes for Thomas Tuchel, even the proven. But Chelsea as a team is very ruthless. And it shouldn't come down that even though the management has changed, that will it become a ruthless Chelsea the way it was? All is on time to see. But then first game week for Chelsea, they were lucky. And Everton not so lucky. They should have at least garnered a point. Clinicalness was missing. Moving from Saturday to Sunday, we had three action-packed games. 
we had Leicester and Brentford sharing honours for 2-2. Manchester United versus Brighton. Oh man, what a game. Eric Ten Hag's first game in charge, but Manchester United losing 2-1. Uh, West Ham versus City. A lot was expected and City delivered. Hammers, slightly disappointing. But then let's see what, what does the next game weeks do bring into play. But yeah, City won the game 2-0 and hand, handsomely. Um, the opening weekend, like I said, uh, it has been it has been no less than an excitement because this is the first game week of the new season and a lot is expected. The game started off, uh, the Sunday started off with the United Leicester, United and Brighton and Leicester City versus Brentford kicking off at the same time. And uh, United going back, uh, they were losing 2-0 uh, on uh, Pascal Gross's uh, goals. He scored twice, he scored a brace and United have no solutions for it. They have no answers until the 68th minute where there was an own goal. Apart from that, United was toothless. They were they were not there. Ronaldo was on the bench. Ronaldo came came back, but then there was still a lot of things missing. This is not a fluid Manchester United team. They need to work hard off the pitch, and Eric Ten Hag has to has to work his socks off. If that doesn't happen, United will be in a disarray. They are still going in in deep in the transfer window, so we don't know what we can expect out of Manchester United in the coming game weeks. But if this situation remains the same, there are further dark days for Manchester United coming this week. In the, in the coming days, they're going to be very, very dark days. And I don't think so. Any United fan wants to hear this. But unfortunately, that is what it is. It is doomsday for Manchester United as of now. On the basis of game week one, they, they were sparks, but then the sparks were not bright enough. However, uh, going on from uh, United versus Brighton. Two, Brentford versus Leicester. What a game. 2-2 two, two draw. Uh, Castagy uh, headed and Leicester were leading. And then uh, Dewsbury Hall made it 2-0. Two, two but Tooney. Oh, Tooney, oh, Tooney. What a goal. Uh, they've, they've, they've done a brilliant, brilliant job. Uh, I believe that Brentford, like last season, Brentford this season, are going to be a team with, to be reckoned with. They will be fighting for a lot of places. They will be crushing a lot of dreams. They might become the differential in the Premier League, a scary place to go to. I believe Brentford has a lot of capabilities and that was shown in today's game. Playing against Leicester City, they are, they've lost their number one keeper, Cashman Michael, who's left the club. But then other than that, there was an overall sound performance, but a lot is expected out of Leicester City and Brendan Rodgers' team. Sometimes it felt that they were toothless. There was not a lot of attacking. In bits and pieces, they had sparks, and that is why they scored goals. But other than that, Brentford were all over them. When, and, and when the pressure came on Leicester, they cracked. And that is the reason they lost. Um, George, uh, I, I think so Josh De Silva was a substitute who scored um, uh, his his uh, uh, his first. I think the so, the first Premier League goal which he's done. It came from the subs bench, and that made it two two. Um, and it goes out um, that the bees did perform well. First 45, 50 minutes, I think the so Leicester were on top. After that, it was just. Uh, in between also, um, Leicester did try to create pressure. Uh, sorry, uh, Brentford also created pressure on Leicester. Leicester created and they created chances. But other than that, there was nothing nothing more in this. There was nothing much to be reckoned with, to be looked at. And finally, City versus West Ham. The game to be looked at. Hammers, and especially for Haaland, how will he perform with the kind of performance he gave in, in the community shield? And he was on there from the get-go. City were all over West Ham. West Ham had no answers. Haaland scored twice, once with a penalty, once with a 65-minute uh, goal, which he had. A clinical performance, a good through pass from Kevin Dubrun, and overall a proper Pep team's performance in game, one, game week one. And yes, Pep's team is there for the title. And this time around, not just one title, they are gunning for a quad. So let's see where do they come out. Because with adding Haaland and uh, uh, the rest of the team, I think that their missing pieces have filled up. 
and this is what they want somebody very very clinical and i feel Haaland is going to be the player who is going to be very very clinical for Manchester United uh, Manchester City and once that happens it is going to add more laurels uh, to Manchester City so whatever comes out further is to be seen and how will they perform and in the coming game weeks there could be big big games coming with Spurs Chelsea United Arsenal everybody going to be in the top of the form and wanting to bring them down so how does um, how does pep respond how does the team respond and how does haland perform in the premier league is to be seen as just being game week one but he's he's there to be proved there as a proven striker so let's see what does he bring to the table just being game week one and there's been a lot of talking points and coming game week two there's going to be more so watch out for more thank you for tuning in do like share subscribe and enable those notifications for further news on the game weeks see you again next time bye guys